Today's video is brought to us by Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders. They are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. Dude, it's good to see you at the show like always. You do, John. As you guys who don't know Daniel, Daniel Shaw. Shaw Strategies, that's, that's where we met, yep. right? And um, but doing a bunch of work now, obviously Gun Mag Warehouse, doing some fun stuff there. Yeah, running marketing at uh, Gun Mag Warehouse, and you know we've been working with you on doing some stuff. Super so, excited about that. Yeah, guys, you, you wonder why I have a pile of HK mags. <laughs> uh, so HK tell me what you, mags, go what you seen at the show, man? Um, man, we saw a lot of stuff at the show. We went around and filmed a lot of content out there, kind of covering what we. We pulled our customers uh, a while back on the blog, like things they wanted to see, and we went through and, and got. We got like 20 videos on new guns and, nice. and uh, just other smaller products and stuff uh, that we're going to put out there. Coolest thing I've seen that I forget what it's called that quad stack 22 from Caltech. That's a cool gun. I just I pray to God it works, but it's cool. Well, I shot it at range day and I picked it up. And I don't I usually get off on shooting guns anymore. Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, oh, I, it's I, a gun. I barely I could run a full auto, like, oh, great, that was awesome, and then not smile or anything. I shot this thing, it was suppressed. The gun didn't move. Yeah, blip, 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 blip. So much fun. I was like, I need to have one of these in my life. And it just keeps shooting. You load it on Tuesday, you shoot but all week. I was week. like smiling ear to ear. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. So cool. Well, and I, I think I'm surprised because, I mean, going in, people are like, well, what's the new stuff? There's not a whole lot of new stuff. But, dude, there's a ton of innovation this year. Not maybe like a huge name. Okay, I mean, you know, Glock launched the 43X and the 48. But, but I mean, but a lot of new innovative thing from lots of different companies. And there's a lot of cool little things yeah. out there. Um, it, it, we don't we don't expect to see innovation. Everybody talks about the companies not being innovative, and it's always annoying when they come back and they're like, "Oh, dude, you're gonna love what we drop tomorrow. We're announcing three new colors." Right. You're like, like nobody oh, cares. Okay, right? nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> um, so that happens all the time. But you know, we're at a time right now where they've got all this inventory. They didn't know how the election was gonna go. Right. And people are sitting on inventory. And, and money's going to, to marketing, trying to clear out that inventory. And I think not, that's good for consumers. It is. It's great for consumers, and because prices are dropping in a lot of ways, uh, and they're just. But whenever the market picks back up, then they'll have more time and money for R and D. Mm. So it, it depends. On, buy more guns, and you'll start seeing more innovation. Basically, there, I think that's a good. You know, that's it. If you're sitting on it, and, and prices are amazing, so now's the time. Yeah. I mean, goodness sakes! I think right now I've seen you can get an entry, you know, budget AR for. Under 400 bucks in a lot of places now, which is ridiculous. Now, you want to step one of up. our videos will be on the channel, man. Is uh, ARs on a budget? Five ARs on a budget. Dude, you know, where do you go with? And uh, we also included in that a piston. And there's a piston that you can get right now for 9.95. Gosh. PWS just did a new piston, which was, was cool. Like, so now we've got an entry level piston area. A piston that, gun for under a thousand bucks. And there's many lesser guns that are in the 1200 to 1600 price range. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Awesome stuff. idea. Yeah, man. Uh, so tell me what what you're seeing in the training industry. What, what do you see is going on in the world of the, the folks? Because I mean, you swim in that, in that world. Uh, man, it depends on which way you want to go with this. Uh, there's uh, at a certain level in the training industry, you know, kind of higher up, I would say that we're all sharing the same three to 500 guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's it's, a lot of truth there. It, it's the same people in every class. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll start a class and people introduce themselves and tell me who they train with and stuff. And uh, I find out that they've trained with all my friends and uh, it's the same group. And then I, I text my buddy and he's like, oh yeah, he came to this class and then he did this. And like, it's all the same group of people. We need to increase that pool of people, right? There's all this talk all the time about, um, you know, firearms and, and the Second Amendment, and there's some serious attacks happening right now. Yeah. People fighting for everything from national reciprocity and uh, other things so that we can, we, everybody can carry guns. And then there's all the talk about what kind of training do you have for that or should there be any training? You know, they, all those conversations that everybody wants to have all the time. Uh, if we want to start letting some guy who doesn't know what he's doing tell you what training you need to have, let's just keep on not training. Because yeah. that's, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. We, we, get, we got to stop all the stupid stuff that's happening out there, and people doing stupid things and dangerous things. Um, and in, as a community, encourage everybody to go get some training. And let's increase that size uh, of people that are out there training regularly. Yeah, I, so I, I, I mean, I always point back to Carl Wren's study that he did last year on Texas gun owners that I think we can extrapolate to the U.S. that less than 1% of firearms owners took a class beyond their license to carry in any given year. 
Um, how do you think we expand that number? How do you think we bump that? I mean, think if we got another 1% of firearms owners into a class, that's doubling what so people are doing. I, I think we have this, there's a, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect happening too, because people are watching YouTube videos. They're watching these Instagram hey. people, and, it's, and I, I love it. And they're going out to the range, and, and they're shooting guns, uh, and they're, they're filling their cup a little bit as far as knowledge and data coming in, wow. uh, and then they start to think that they, they have it figured out. Maybe they went to the range, maybe they didn't. Uh, and they're like, oh, I'm good, I've been dry firing, but they, they really haven't put in the work work to get better at these things. Uh, and people start thinking they've got to figure it figured out because I like what that guy said, that makes sense. And they become the guy uh, in their circle of friends that kind of knows it all. And uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect, I'm not very good to explain this whole thing, but basically you get to this point where you're learning a little stuff at the beginning and everybody thinks, oh, I'm awesome at some Super point. confident, yeah. So, yeah, like I know everything. And then when you really start learning things, you realize you don't know anything. Yeah. I have been experiencing violence, training for violence, uh, studying my craft, the data, like studying how, what, about how humans do violence and how they receive violence and, and how we react to that physiologically, psychologically, uh, for over 20 years now. Right. And I am at that, I, I believe that I'm part of that, that curve right now where I'm, I'm, I'm starting to really learn things. Mm. You know? Like and starting to realize we don't know what we don't know. Exactly. I mean, I, man, I, I've got a, a saying that I say all the time, uh, I have been wrong about so many things in my past. There's absolutely no way I can be 100% right today. I tell my students at the beginning of the class, right. like, I, there's no way what I'm going to teach you today is 100% correct. It's the best I have right now. And I'm going to be even more right tomorrow. Yeah. But, but this is, I'm, I'm more correct than I've ever been, but there's going to be new information. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I guess I think I'm in the same booth you are. I, I vote, I, I'd, I'd love your thoughts, because I, I do think sometimes we argue on the internet a lot about, you know, the, the way. And you know, and there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet, but sometimes you just gotta let people go through the path that they're yeah. gonna go through. Because I think we were all there at one time. Yeah, like the magazine and clip, for example. You, know, yeah, you come yeah. hang out with me, you can call a magazine a clip all day long, I'm never even gonna correct you. You hang out long enough, you're eventually gonna start calling it the right thing. Yeah. And then somebody say, well, I, I usually politely correct people. Well, that's awesome. I would rather spend that time talking to this new shooter about something important. He's gonna figure out what stuff's called soon anyway, right? right? It doesn't matter, who cares? And the nine versus 45, let's waste our life arguing on the internet. If, the, if we could take the passion in the nine versus 45 article and apply it to protecting the second amendment, we, we wouldn't have any trouble place. right now. We wouldn't have any trouble right We'd now. We'd be in a better place. I, you know, so I was joking in a, a video not too long ago working gun disarms and stuff like that, and I talk about, listen, well, he has the holdy on part, and I've got the shooty part, and that's a problem. And people are like, well, why are you, you know, you're not being respectful of what's going on. And I'm like, do you understand what I mean when he has the holdy part? Well, yeah, you meant the grip. Can we move on? <laughs>